We didn't show you here, but we used the same plastic gauge technique on all the rod bearings before lubing the rod bolts and the bearings for final install. Self-cleaning compressor. Note if your piston's marked with a front with a dot or a slash or something, put that towards the front of the motor. Uh, you want to be careful at this point to not have the rod bolts hit the crank on its way down. There we go. Uh, when you're putting the piston in the bore, uh, I prefer using a plastic hammer handle. A uh, wooden hammer handle will be all right. Uh, there are also piston hammers, which are a plastic hammer with a longer snout for hitting down to the bore. Uh, any of the above methods works just fine. Uh, once you got your rings in there, the piston should slide relatively easily. And uh, just guide it over the journal on the crank so that you don't nick the crank with your rod bolts. get the proper torque reading. I'll use a little bit of that. That way you know you're getting it tightened down to what they want it tightened down to. Once the bolts are torqued on the first rod, you repeat the process through remaining seven pistons and rods. Once we have all the pistons installed and the rod bolts torqued to spec, we're going to hand crank the motor over and make sure it turns free. It still turns. We chose to buy all of the camshaft parts from Comp Cams because they have a comprehensive kit. Uh, only thing it doesn't come with is push rods, which they suggest you measure yourself uh, just to ensure that everything lines up right. Uh, we got a double roller timing chain, cam itself, lifters, and uh, roller tip rockers. So in this particular application, we decided to go with a hydraulic roller retrofit. Uh, what this means is it's a modern roller cam that's designed to go in a non-roller block. So it's got lifters have link bars to keep them from spinning, unlike the old flat tappet where the lifter was supposed to spin on every lobe. As far as installation and break-in, cam itself goes in just the same. Uh, the lifters do have to face the correct direction so the link bar doesn't interfere with anything. And then when you go to start it, there's no break-in for the cam. You just start it up and let it idle, and then there's a procedure to break in the rings, sometimes provided by the ring manufacturer. But you don't have to worry about the start it up and hold it in RPM for an extended period of time to break in the cam. Uh, since this car is a weekend cruiser and not a daily driver, we did choose a relatively aggressive cam. Uh, it's part of Comp Cam's Extreme Energy series. Uh, part of what Extreme Energy means is the uh, lobe design. Uh, they have an aggressive ramp rate. Uh, so even though the duration may not sound like a lot, the valve is actually opening very fast. Uh, usually on a timing set, there's markers. Most of the time, it's a dot and you line those up to make sure the cam and the crank are timed correctly. In our next installment, we'll show you how to properly degree a camshaft.